Welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Timothy McVeigh, an army veteran and domestic terrorist known for the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing. America is a country whose roots are in liberty and small government. Fast forward to today, this country's government is anything but small, and American citizens are incredibly overgoverned. What's worse, the individual's voice regarding government activity is practically null. Did you vote for the Wall Street bailouts? Did you vote for the billions of dollars sent to Ukraine? Did you vote for the creation of the NSA? Did you vote for the Navy's latest aircraft carrier? Did you vote for the 87,000 new armed IRS agents that will soon be auditing the American middle class? This list can go on and on. Americans are virtually in a situation of taxation without representation, the very incident that started the Revolutionary War. Does this mean we are marching towards a bloody revolution? Our guest in this episode very much thinks so. In fact, Timothy McVeigh often quotes Thomas Jefferson saying, The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Is this the faith of this country? Or is Timothy McVeigh just a nut job like most domestic terrorists? As always, let's start with a brief background. Timothy McVeigh was born on April 23, 1968, in Lockport, New York. He is the middle child of three and the only boy of his parents. McVeigh's grandfather had a profound effect on him. He introduced young McVeigh to guns and life outdoors. His early childhood aspiration was to become a gun shop owner. He also became intensely interested in gun rights and the Second Amendment. Rather than focus on school, McVeigh dropped out of college and enlisted in the U.S. Army at the age of 20, where he was part of the 1st Infantry Division. His army records show that he was a talented soldier and marksman. He was inevitably promoted to sergeant, but had several hiccups in the army for being racist. He was reprimanded for purchasing a white powered t-shirt at a Ku Klux Klan rally, and was also known for assigning undesirable work to black soldiers. Nevertheless, he was deployed to Operation Desert Storm, where he proved his valor and earned an impressive bronze star. Timothy then tried his hand with special forces, but failed the difficult training of Green Beret. He lost interest in the army afterwards and returned to civilian life. After the military, Timothy spent time aimlessly drifting, doing dead-end jobs. He developed a gambling problem and got into debt, and also grew frustrated due to his lack of success with women. He was just never good around them. His anti-government sentiments also grew, especially after witnessing the Waco incident in Texas an incident in which he personally drove down to to show his anti-government support. The overt abuse of force by the ATF during the Waco incident pushed Timothy to become more radical. This is especially after FBI sniper Lo Horiuchi shot Randy Weaver's wife while she held an infant. Timothy became convinced the government was becoming completely totalitarian and decided to take action. Two years after the Waco incident, Timothy placed a truck filled with explosive near the Alfred Muir Federal Building in Oklahoma City. The detonation set off an explosion that took out a third of the building, killed 168 people, 19 of whom were children, and injured 680 more. This was the largest terrorist incident in the United States before 9-11, and sent a total shockwave within the country. Timothy was arrested shortly after, and sentenced to death for his treason. It is obvious that he had clearly done this act to send a message. So, like we did in a Unabomber episode, let's take a look at what this message was. The government is afraid of the guns people have, because they have to have control of the people at all times. Once you take away the guns, you can do anything to the people. You give them an inch, and they take a mile. I believe we are slowly turning into a socialist government. The government is continually growing bigger and more powerful. And the people need to prepare to defend themselves against government control. Taxes are a joke. Regardless of what a political candidate promises, they will increase. 
More taxes are always the answer to government mismanagement. They mess up. We suffer. Taxes are reaching cataclysmic levels, with no slowdown in sight. Is a civil war imminent? Do we have to shed blood to reform the current system? I hope it doesn't come to that. But it might. Timothy McVeigh's ideas are not new by any means. In fact, they are quite common in the libertarian and conservative community. The obsession to bear arms comes from a place of cynical pragmatism. If corporations cannot be trusted with a mercantile monopoly, how can governments around the world be trusted with a monopoly on deadly force? After all, both corporations and governments are run by people. People with fallible characters like the rest of us. Gun rights is about maintaining a balance of power. For an example, during the Cold War, governments around the world participated in a program called MAD, or Mutually Assured Destruction. Governments instructed their military to beef their atomic power so much that any nuclear war will ensure the death of everyone on Earth. Hence, no winners. As mad as this may sound, it worked. The mutually assured destruction nuclear program kept superpowers like the Soviets in check, and Europe was able to maintain a period of peace longer than usual. Gun rights is similar to mad, but at a local level. Armed citizens ensure the government doesn't get any bright ideas about collective coercion. It is precisely this balance of power, rooted in violence, that keeps democracies alive. As a high school teacher from the movie Starship Trooper said, violence is the supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. Timothy interpreted the Waco incident as an act of terrorism from the government. So he decided the way to keep them in check was to reflect these actions back at them. The result of the Oklahoma City bombing was the exact opposite of what Timothy sought after, however. His terrorist act further justified the need for government to public opinion and planted the seed for Big Brother organizations like Homeland Security. Just like Kaczynski, Timothy wanted to instill a spirit of vigilance to the American people. But unfortunately, these men believe that how a message is delivered does not matter. They were wrong. While some of us Americans certainly appreciate the right to bear arms, none of us condone acts of terrorism. Case closed. Since this is a location channel, one place you can check out is the Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum in Oklahoma City. This place is a reminder of the destruction and heartache that took place during the bombing. The museum is separated into two parts. There is an outdoor symbolic memorial as a place of quiet reflection for the deceased and injured. And there is an indoor memorial museum with an interactive learning experience to share with you the touching story that took place on April 19, 1995. The museum is free for children, but admission for adults is $15. Those of you who want to visit the Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum should save this location on a Cityscape app. Timothy McVeigh hoped to become a martyr for liberty. His hopes was that the bombing would start a bloody revolutionary war against the government. While his wishes have not come true today, it doesn't mean they cannot become a reality tomorrow. There are many people who share Tim's ideologies, but are simply waiting for the state to become weak enough before they strike. Many libertarians believe the government is bigger than ever, but this may be a miscalculation on their part. Yes, government overreach has expanded to every part of society, but it is precisely this overmeddling that will ruin them. The state is financially bankrupt, and its credibility at an all-time low. Once people refuse to acknowledge their political leaders as valid authority, this seemingly unstoppable political machine will grind to a halt. Then what? Well, who knows what will happen, but I suspect fractures and lots of local ruling will take place. It is either we stop the government's trend of expansion to prevent its demise, 
or we allow Timothy's dream of revolution to turn this country into a living nightmare. The choice is yours. As for me, I think I'll scout for safe zones and create a community for misfits. See you next time.